Hi, I'm Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Take a look at this great quilt behind me. Isn't this beautiful? I call this the Binding Star Quilt because it was made using the binding tool template. And my good friend Susan Brown, who makes the binding tool, she actually brought this idea to us and I love it. It's so easy. And you know, this is a this is a great tool for helping you finish your quilt. If you have any trouble binding, we have a video on that and you can check it below. But when a template has more than one uses, it becomes really valuable. And so I love this binding tool template. Now, what I wanted to show you about this template right here is that sometimes we get them and people say, how come mine is blue or how come mine is red or you know, whatever like that. Well, it's not really. It's clear and it has this plastic on the back and you just have to remember to peel it off. And the reason I tell you this is because we do get some calls about it, but I actually thought my washer and dryer were blue for two years, and it was because I left the plastic on. So one day when I was peeling this off, I thought, I'm going to go home and check that washer and dryer. And sure enough, I, have, I do not have a blue washer and dryer. Anyway, so this pattern is using the binding tool, uh, and you'll need that to make that. And the other things you're going to need is you're going to need about a yard of background fabric, and we use this black, and you're going to need um, a, a pre-cut two and a half inch strips, 40 of them. And so this, for this one, we've used the Ginny Buyer palette, the Galaxy colorway for RJR, and it's just gorgeous. I mean, just look at those. I mean, it's just beautiful, beautiful blending colors. So let me show you how to do this. So to put together this binding tool star, it goes together in quadrants. And so you make these big blocks right here, just like this, and you're gonna make four of those and put those together and it's going to make the star. And this is what one quadrant looks like. Doesn't that look awesome? And it's so easy. I can't wait to show you. So for each quadrant, what you're going to need is one eight and a half inch background square. We have black. You're going to need four two and a half inch squares right here. And you're going to need one eight and seven eighths inch square that is cut on the diagonal to make two triangles just like that. And that's what you're going to need out of your background. What you're going to need out of your um, pre-cut two and a half inch strip is you're going to need um, four pairs, so eight pieces of, um, of matching colors to make this gradient look like this. And so when I say a pair, what I mean is I mean, you need one going that direction and one going the other. So they're going opposite directions. And I'll show you how to do that. You know, if you just leave your jelly roll strip folded, you're going to get pairs. So let me, let me cut one of those and show you. Let me just pull one out of here real quick. This is danger. You know, if you pull one of those out in a store, you're not getting it back. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our binding tool right here and we're going to lay it on the edge of our strip right here and we'll cut off the selvage edge right here. There we go. And then we're going to cut right here. See how it has this uh, 45 already made. And these are the pieces you're looking for. And if you leave your strip folded, you'll get two of these that are going opposite direction, just like that. And so you'll cut, you'll cut two from each strip and then you're going to, um, you'll have a piece left over, and that piece is what we use to make this piano key border out here. So we'll get to that a little later. All right, let me show you how this block is made because it's so much fun. Now what I do is I separate my pairs into two stacks, one going this way, one going this way. On one set, it doesn't matter which one, you're gonna sew a two and a half inch square to the end of the strip. So right down here to this end part right here, we're gonna sew a square to each one of these. So let's go to the sewing machine and do that. All right, I'm going to take the whole pile and I'm just going to sit over here and I'm just going to sew them on one after the other after the other. So there's one. I actually think my Two, and this actually is called chain piecing if you've never done it. Putting all these, just, you know, not cutting in between threads, it saves you a lot of time. All right, so now we'll just cut these apart. 
and then we're going to iron them back. And this construction, when it starts to happen, it's just so much fun. Oh, I have one still attached. We'll free him. And that one. All right. Oop. I ironed my corner down. Let me press that out. Okay, so once you get these all ironed, you're just going to leave them over here in one pile. And then you're going to take from your other pile and you're going to sew one of these to the side of your eight and a half inch block right here. So we're going to lay these right sides together and we're just going to sew down a quarter of an inch. All right, here we go. All right, once you get that sewn, your threads clipped, then we'll press it back and iron, just iron it out from the middle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to add the matching piece to the other side. And see right here how you can see how this is forming up right here. And, uh, and it makes, you want to make sure that this seam, you know, goes, nests up nicely. And so I'm going to lay this right along this edge and sew a quarter of an inch. Now we're going to press this back and you can see the beginning of our quadrant has happened. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to keep adding and now you're adding where your, where your black square is. You know, these should fit each time and it, you know, and you'll know if you're putting this on the wrong way or something like that, it's not going to match up. So then we're going to go ahead and add our single square to this side and our strip with the block on the other side. So let's go ahead and add a few of those. Again, I like to just press it back. And then we're going to add the matching piece with the black square up here and you can really see it starting to come together. All right, let me go ahead and put this on. Sometimes it's easier to start from the, um, the square when you're nesting them to make sure they match up real nice. And if your seam happens to be going the wrong way, just flip it over the other way because we want them to, to lay really nicely in there. All right, so now I have two rows on here and let's press this one back. And we can flip this over to make sure our, our seams are kind of going the way we want them to. All right, so you can see this is coming together. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these next pieces and um, I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so now we've got our last piece on here. Let's go iron it open and see what this looks like. Okay, so here's what we've got. We finished our last piece and we ironed that on, but now we need to make it a square and that's where these two triangles come in. And we are going to attach those to either side of this right here. And that's going to give us that's going to give us that square look that we're going for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these triangles and they will, I, I, want you to, um, I want you to see this because they will hang off the edge a little bit on either side. And that's okay because we're going to trim them down. We need enough room to trim down. And so what we're going to do, you can put a pin in here if you'd like, but I'm just going to go sew these down a quarter of an inch and sew one to each side. All right, 
able to slip this around and sew this other one on over here. Now we've got our squares, our triangles onto the sides, and we're going to iron them back and trim it up. Now the one thing you want to remember about this is that you want your four quadrants to be the same size. So once you get one done, you want to measure it, and mine measures out at 16 inches. And so you want to make sure that they all end up the same. So I'm going to put mine right here and um, right on these edges, you know, if you have a place that overlaps over here, like this little dog ear poking out, you just kind of want to trim it up. Let's see here. We're going to trim this one up. Not too much to trim off so far. All right, oh. There we go, a little more on this side, and then this side, one more. All right. So now we have our quadrant. So now it takes four of these to make a star. So let me show you how these go together. There's two right there. And you'll sew those two together. And you're going to sew this together like a giant four patch. This is so much fun. So all of your corner squares, your center squares, are the black squares. And look how easy that is. And your star's done just like that. So this is the middle right here. Then what we did was we put a little two and a half inch border around it. Then we made the piano key border. The piano key border is made using the leftover pieces off the end of your pre-cut strip. And so we'll have five inch pieces like this. We'll trim them all to five. And then you just, as you're sewing them together, and of course you'll use different ones, but you will just lay them right sides together like this sew your little quarter of an inch seam whoop, and you'll just keep adding and adding and adding and adding those until you get this nice border out here. Now one of the fun things about this quilt was when I finished it and I brought it upstairs my grandson Noah started playing with the different quadrants and the different pieces and I have to show you what he came up with because you know it's, it's, it's just a cool thing you know you you share a little bit of your talent with your children and your grandchildren and they make it bigger sometimes so that's what happened with this so I'm gonna take this down right here and you can see what happened behind us here so take a look at this this is a same, uh, just the identical quadrant, but he's used it all over in this quilt. So here's a quadrant, you know, I mean the whole thing is just quadrants again, and he's used the big star in the middle, but he's used all these star pieces all the way around it on the outside, and it's just so gorgeous. So if you want to make this big quilt, we used, uh, for this one, we used the Artisan Spirit um, Shimmer Strips, and this is the Blue Lagoon. And they're just, I mean, it's just beautiful. It's two and a half inch strips. You're going to need about 40 of them plus a charm pack. And that will give you enough to do your quadrants and the border. And then you're going to need about two yards of your background fabric. And on this quilt, we use the teal. And it's just beautiful. So go ahead and make some of these quadrants. Play with them. Have fun with them. Find new ways to use them. And just enjoy this. And we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Binding Tool Star from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi, it's Jenny again, and we fell in love with the fabric we used for the Binding Tool Star tutorial. It's the Ginny Buyer Palette, the Galaxy Colorway, and it's fun to see those same fabrics used a different way. So take a look at this quilt behind me. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh, I just love all the dimension and the way it's put together. This is a beautiful quilt, and if you'd like more information on how to make this quilt and the pattern, you can click right here on this video.